when was it ever a good idea to hijack people's browsing sessions just so you can inject some ads? Was it worth it? I sure as heck hope so. What were you thinking? For the people that don't know, back in 2013, September 2013, Lenovo started shipping software called Superfish on its computers. Superfish is adware. It injected ads into people's browsing sessions. Right then and there, that should be a sign that that wasn't a good idea. And the biggest stink of it all was that in order for this to work over HTTPS, Superfish had to install its own root certificate so that the browser wouldn't think anything was funny was going on because you know, searches at Google and Yahoo and your you know, Amazon are usually always encrypted. So now anybody that wants to compromise your computer has one single point to attack. If they can guess the password to that root certificate, they can use it to sign their own certificate and your browser will not know the difference. It will just accept it because they made Windows accept that root certificate unconditionally. Bravo! Now, what makes everything all that much more fun is Lenovo's reaction to this when they got caught with their pants down. Their first reaction was, oh, we've gone and we've uninstalled the Superfish software. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, this comes into play a little bit later. But for now, the Lurit certificate was left behind. Not good. I'll get into this later. But what made it even more fun it was when the CTO of Lenovo came out, Peter Hotensius, came out and said, we're not here to argue with the security researchers. They're dealing with a theoretical. It wasn't a theory. This is something that is well known in the security community, how to do a man in the middle attack. If you don't understand the science terms, don't use them. This is something that was known. Just because you can't see the air doesn't mean it's not there. Just because nobody knows that they were compromised doesn't mean nobody was compromised. When you're dealing with security as well, you assume compromise until you can prove otherwise. So before I go any further, Let's recap as to who is actually responsible. Lenovo and Superfish. And Superfish is a venture that has been backed by five companies, five venture capitalist companies, and credit goes to Slate.com for naming these out, or naming these venture firms. Uh, Vintage Investment Partners, Draper Fisher Jervetson, JF or DFJ Tamir Fishman Ventures, Xenia Venture Capital, and Individuals Venture Fund. So, hope it was worth it. And there's one thing I am surprised nobody has pointed a finger at, and that is my favorite whipping boy of all time, Microsoft. Yes, Microsoft did not go and install this stupid software on people's computers. But they sure as hell have created the environment in which encouraged Lenovo to go this far. Let's start at the very beginning with the cost of the OEM license. Back in the beginning, we're talking, you know, before 95, before 98, the cost of PCs were so expensive that that cost of the OEM license was just a drip in the bucket. But as prices came down, they, you know, that Windows license started to sting a little bit more and a little bit more. And OEMs were forced to start doing product placement on their laptops and desktop computers to offset the cost of that license. Now, they could have stepped in 
and set some parameters, but they never did. Now, my, you could say, well, Microsoft keeps their hands off of that stuff. It's like they let the people do what they, you know, they want the companies do what they want because they need the, their partners. No, not really. Uh, see, remember the antitrust BS when it came out that, you know, to get that cheaper OEM license that uh, Microsoft partners couldn't uh, ship computers other than Windows computers. And they couldn't install browsers other than Internet Explorer. So, it's not like they've never stepped in before. Why can't you step in for the consumer? Why does it always got to be about you, Microsoft? Now, having said that, it seems that since this antitrust ruling, you know, of course, they had to stop doing that crap. But it seems like they have been skittish on what they do. And what I, the biggest example I have of this is how it took seven years for the Xbox 360 to get Internet Explorer. All that the console people wanted was a browser. Because the PlayStation has always, well, not always, not since, I think PS2 came up with it, but the PS3 certainly had it. And it was crap, but it was something. Why could you have Internet Explorer on the Xbox 360? And some would say that's because it was they wanted to make a clear distinction between having a PC and having a console. And it's like you don't couldn't play games with a keyboard and mouse on the Xbox 360, so they weren't going to have a browser either. The Xbox 360 is something different, though. If you, I don't buy that they had concerns that it was all about the games. I believe it was concerns over antitrust. And I don't see it, because like I said, Xbox 360 is a completely different system. It's not a PC. It's closed by default. We if People know this going in when they buy consoles, that those platforms are closed, so I don't think they had anything to worry about. So the thing I would like to point out to Microsoft is... Nobody's going to accuse you of abusing your monopolistic power if you use it for the public good. If it's consumer friendly, no one gives a shit. Do it. So, a couple of things that you could start doing is you can come up with a rule now that says that people cannot install crap on the, the, your Windows computers that interferes with how Windows processes talk to each other and how the Windows operating system communicates with the, you know, the outside world. Now, I know one thing off the top of my head that that's going to hit, and that's antivirus software. So just have the an option for the consumer to do that when they open up the box. Whoop, it's one step. And then... Boom. Not only can you keep your antivirus software, but you rule out Superfish ever happening again. And nobody is going to come after you for this because it's in the public interest. Imagine that. People might actually like you for a change. One thing, other thing while you're at it, why don't you mandate OEMs actually give us a plain Jane Windows installation CD. Because if Lenovo wanted to keep this under wraps, the person that reported it obviously knew what he was doing. And if he would have just gone ahead and wiped everything off and did his own installation of Windows, nobody would have known. But OEMs, since Windows XP, have been dicks. With Windows 95, he used to get just a plain installation CD. Windows 98, you'd get a plain installation CD. Windows XP is when everything started going away. And the only thing that you get nowadays is this. So, even though I know what I'm doing, and I'm fully capable and willing to take on full responsibility for that OEM hardware... I am forced to install all this crap for the sake of a buck for Toshiba. Why? 
how does this make me like Windows that much more? It makes me hate Windows that much more. It makes me stay in Linux as much as I can. So, give just give me the installation CD. It's all I want. Let me do it myself. But of course, we both know that's not going to happen. And so people like me are going to keep bitching. And shit like this is going to keep happening. And some other advice that you're probably just going to ignore. Windows installations. Remember what I said before? I would come back to not installing everything. Uninstalling everything. You need to have a system in the OS that takes care of not only installing but uninstalling and that a system that people can't F with, then you don't get shit like this. It's bad. Windows is, has been horrible and they've in MSI, the MSI installer has done little to address this because not everybody uses it because at first it was a closed off format. I don't know how open it is today, but even today I see very few open source projects use MSI. We need Windows to have an open, well-documented system that automatically installs and uninstalls. And you have to make it so that it warns the user when they run executables, hey, this is the old way of doing things. Things may not be right. Do you want to continue? And when the user says yes, because we know the user user is always going to say yes, they'll never think about anything critically. At least you can say, we told them. My favorite example is AOL software. God damn, do you remember that? And what a pain in the ass that software was. And when it didn't work, and you went to uninstall it, and you went to see what actually happened, you just it just took out the minimum amount of registry entry so that the AOL dialer no longer appeared, and the icons no longer appeared. It completely left every other registry entry and every other file on the computer. So the process to uninstall AOL from any computer was to first run the not uninstaller, then go and delete the files, and then run the registry cleaner. And back in those days, registry cleaners were quite ham-fisted with the registry. People weren't quite familiar with the registry yet, and that was something you really didn't want to do. Nowadays, I think Crap Cleaner and maybe a couple of other utilities are out there that do a pretty good job of cleaning up the registry without screwing things up too much. So Microsoft. I told you what you a couple of things you can do. I know you're probably going to ignore me. Oh well. At least I told you so. <laughs>